If you were given a gift 16 years ago, would you be the jerk for refusing to return that back to the person who gave it to you? We'll get into that in a bit, but first, am I the jerk for filming my boyfriend street racing and sending it to his dad? My boyfriend started street racing when we were teens. I think he started doing it to get his dad's attention, but he'd never admit it. In the past, he's gotten in trouble with the police, but his dad would always get him out of it and the only consequences he really had was his dad cutting him off for a month one time. He eventually stopped himself after his dad started working on repairing their relationship. I don't know why after three years he decided to race again. He invited me, but he told me we were going to a party because he knows I don't like the races. I begged him not to race, but his friends were encouraging him, and everybody was acting like I was worrying over nothing and that I wasn't a supportive girlfriend. I even tried to use the fact that his dad would be disappointed in him if he raced, but he didn't care because he's an adult and his dad wouldn't find out. I even warned him that I would tell his dad, but it wasn't enough to stop him, and I don't think he thought I actually would. I didn't want this to become a regular thing, and the only person who could actually influence my boyfriend enough to get him to stop is his dad. So I filmed him and sent it to his dad. My boyfriend hasn't spoken to me much since, but I know his dad is angry with him and they're fighting. His cousin told me his dad has threatened to cut him off for good, and that his friends are telling him to leave me over this. I've spoken to his parents, and they suggested I give my boyfriend time to calm down, as they think he's more angry at himself than me right now, but I don't know. Am I the jerk? Although it sucks to take a video of him and intentionally get him in trouble with his father when it could really impact their relationship, if that's the only thing you can do to get them to stop from doing this, I can't blame OP. I mean, God forbid they actually get caught by cops, or God forbid an accident happens, and that might just be it for them. Can you really blame OP here? Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy getting to decide whether or not all of these people are jerks, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our next story is, am I the jerk for refusing to drive my friend while she wasn't wearing a seatbelt, even though it made her late? I, 22-year-old female, joined a hiking group a few months ago to make some new friends. There, I met this girl named Reese, 23-year-old female. We share a lot of the same interests and we became pretty good friends. For the past month or so, Reese has been on the hunt for a new job since her current one has abysmal pay. She finally got an interview, but about four days ago, her car broke down and she had to take it to the shop. Because of this, she asked me to drive her to the interview, and I agreed since her apartment and her interview site are both within 15 minutes of my apartment. On the day of the interview, two days ago, I drove to Reese's building, and she got in the car and everything seemed okay. However, when I was pulling out of the parking lot, I noticed she wasn't wearing her seatbelt. Since I'm uncomfortable driving people without seatbelts, I asked her to put it on, thinking she just forgot. But when I said that, she told me that she doesn't wear seatbelts. I immediately stopped the car and told her she needed to put it on, and the car would not be moving while she wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Reese got upset and said that her uncle died in a car accident because he got twisted up in his seatbelt and wasn't able to get out of the car before it exploded. So she doesn't wear a seatbelt for safety reasons. I felt terrible for her, but I stood firm and said I didn't want to get a fine for her not wearing her seatbelt. Furthermore, if we got in an accident and she got hurt because she wasn't wearing a seatbelt, I wouldn't be able to live with myself. Reese only got more upset and said it was only a 15 minute drive and the chances of us getting into an accident are so low so it doesn't matter. She also said she's a grown woman and I can't control what she does. I said that's true, but I'm also a grown woman and I can choose whether or not I want to drive my car. And if she wasn't going to wear a seatbelt, I wasn't going to drive her. We argued for a little bit more before I told her she can get an Uber if she feels so strongly about it. Reese called me a jerk and got out of my car, and I just left. She later texted me and said that she ended up being late for her interview, and now because of me, she wasn't going to get the job. I told her that all she had to do was put on a seatbelt, and she made herself late. She responded that I wasn't being understanding of her trauma and I'm a controlling witch. So now I'm having second thoughts. I don't know, should I have just bitten the bullet and driven her? Although sadly their uncle experienced that rare circumstance where the seatbelt could be a hindrance, most situations it's going to save your life. If OP doesn't feel comfortable driving with their friend not wearing a seatbelt, you can't blame them for that. And honestly, don't most places have a click it or ticket law? 
and that usually extends to more than just the driver. Our next story is, am I the jerk for shouting at someone because they touched my fins? I'm currently training to learn freediving, and part of this is going to a pool to practice apnea, breath holding, and general technique. Now, finding a pool that allowed me to use any sort of fins was a pain in the butt, so when I found one that did, I was super happy. Also, my fins aren't your usual ones. They're true freedive fins, almost 3 feet long, carbon fiber, and they were very expensive for me to buy, almost $400. They're also decently fragile compared to your usual fins, and are also really flexible. This means you have to be fairly careful. The pool is your standard type with a shallow end of 60 centimeters, 1.5 meters, from 1 to 5 feet in depth, and then it slopes down to 2 meters, 7 feet. There's also a small section which is 4 meters, about 13 feet, deep for diving boards. I was at the 1.5 meter section with my buddy when this happened. Part of my training involves being face down in the water with my legs out behind me, and this of course meant that my fins were sticking out. During one exercise, I felt someone bump into my right hand fin, so I put my head up to see what was happening. It was a teenage girl, maybe 15-ish. I explained to her in the local language, I happen to speak it, that she needed to look out for other people. I continued with the exercises with my buddy, but that same thing kept happening. It was obvious that she just wasn't listening to anything I'd said or watching what she was doing. If anything, she seemed more interested in being stupid in front of her friends. It happened multiple times, and I tried to remind her gently. The last time it happened, the fins were bent into a semicircle, and I became really annoyed because of this, and instead of being nice, I basically laid into her and told her that if she wanted to be an idiot, then I hoped she had the $400 to replace my fins when she broke them. She burst into tears, and I saw her sitting at the side of the pool for the rest of the time I was there. I now feel I might have been too harsh on a young girl for what was likely an innocent mistake. Am I the jerk? I think the main reason, personally, that OP is the jerk is because they kept going after this 15-year-old girl rather than trying to report it to somebody who actually could do something about it. I mean, if they're clearly intentionally doing this, report it to somebody. Don't let it happen three, four times and then go and antagonize the 15-year-old girl to her face. And also, this is a public pool anyways. Somebody's using fins and also practicing going underwater, so they're completely horizontal, they probably have their arms out in front of them. They're what, 8, 9, 10 feet long? It feels also kind of inevitable that somebody's gonna bump into you. This next story is, am I the jerk for being the reason my parents and brother may become homeless? Let me preface this post by saying I love my family, but I can't live with them anymore. I'm a single mom, 34, and I'm doing my best to provide my daughter, 15, with a good life. Right now my parents, 55 and 58, and brother, 32, live with me in a two-bedroom apartment, which means I share a bedroom with my daughter. I hate it because I want her to have her own space and be a normal teenager who slams their bedroom door shut and mopes around. It's not possible because my parents use the other, bigger bedroom, and my brother sleeps in the living room. My parents are extremely religious and believe God will send them a miracle and they'll have a wonderful, money-filled life soon. The thing is, they've been waiting for this miracle for more than 10 years now. They've been given prophecies and dreams that indicate God has something big in store for them. In the meantime, my dad lost his job and doesn't work. My mom doesn't work either. Every time I ask them when God will be delivering on those promises, they say soon and we just have to be patient. The sad thing is they really believe all that bull. I'm so tired of living with them because we don't get along and my mom and I are regularly in some argument about the dumbest things. I get treated like a child and neither my nor my daughter's opinions are taken seriously. My and my daughter's social lives have suffered because we can't bring anyone to my place as they'll be confronted by a messy living room since my brother isn't the cleanest person and my parents are always at home. My brother has an online writing job, but it takes him weeks to complete his work. And he doesn't get paid that much, so he's not contributing to our living costs. My parents don't contribute anything either. My daughter's mental health is also suffering because she doesn't get along with my parents. She tries her best to, because of how obnoxiously religious they are. I know that her anxiety and depression, and my own, will be easier to handle in a healthy way when we're in our own place. I'm planning on moving away, but that will mean my parents and brother won't have someone to pay their rent. 
or buy them food anymore. They'll be homeless. Am I the jerk for considering leaving them behind and getting a place for me and my daughter? I just can't blame OP for not wanting to support 55, 58, and 32-year-old relatives. They're all either young enough or old enough to work together to have a place to live. And it shouldn't bear down upon OP as a single mom to hold those strings together in a two-bedroom apartment. I mean, it sounds to me like OP hit the stop button, let them all come in to try and figure it out for now, and then the rest of them just got complacent and happy with it. They're not working towards anything. Our next story is, am I the jerk for confronting my friend? I, 18-year-old female, along with my friend group of three, all female and my age, tend to eat out regularly. One of the friends in the group always forgets her wallet every time we go out, and that leaves us paying, otherwise it would make us look and feel like bad friends. She always says that she'll pay us back, but at this rate she owes us at least $200. Last week we went out for lunch as usual, and when the bill came, we all paid for the food we ordered, we don't split the bill. She came out with the usual, guys, I'm so sorry, I forgot my wallet. Drinks on me next time, I promise. Everyone looks annoyed as we take out our wallets and pay for her half as well. She doesn't exactly order the cheapest things on the menu, which makes this even worse. Yesterday, she asked on the group chat if we would be willing to go out to lunch, and no one replied. I took matters into my own hands and decided to confront her about never paying us back, always conveniently forgetting her wallet and never sticking to her promises. Everyone on the group seemed to agree, and instead she left the group chat out of nowhere and blocked us on all of our socials. Yeah, this is just kind of karma catching up to them. You're not the jerk for saying, hey, you owe me money, get that back to me before I start hanging out with you again. It would be bad enough if they did that to one of the friends. The fact that you had a group chat that could all say in unison, yeah, you owe all of us money? How could you be the jerk? This next story is, am I the jerk for showing up at a birthday party in a long dress? I, 18 year old female, sometimes do modeling work for friends. Nothing big, but many people I know are in fashion. So sometimes they hire me to put on their clothes and jewelry to show on their social platforms. A few days ago was my cousin Maria's 16th birthday. All the family was invited like usual for her birthdays, but my parents live a little further than the rest and we sometimes couldn't make it. More often than not, we just sent her gifts and well wishes. This year, however, I had a video shoot at my friend's place 40 minutes or so from Maria's house, so I told Maria I would attend the party. My parents and brothers asked me to pass their gifts to Maria. I had on a sundress and went to my designer friend's place, intending to wear that dress to the party after work. As we wrapped up, however, I noticed that my dress, which was hung in the corner of the room, was gone. As it turned out, my friend's girlfriend thought my dress was one of my friend's works, so she wore it outside. My designer friend apologized and offered me a dress to wear and promised to return my dress to me later. My options were limited. My friend was plus sized. Her girlfriend left behind a dirty shirt and shorts. All the dresses for the shoot were long and fancy. I picked one of the more modest ones left as I was already late for the party. I was the last person to arrive and was also the most dressed up. My relatives all showered me with compliments on how I look, even Maria's father. I didn't want to steal the attention from Maria so I tried to keep close to our 80 year old grandfather who only sat still and kept quiet most of the time, but the rest of the family kept coming to greet me and complimented my dress and look. Maria thanked me for the presents and served me cake. She also thanked me when I complimented her new hairstyle. I thought everything went well. As I drove back home, however, Maria called me, telling me I was the jerk for showing up looking like that and stealing attention from her. I apologized and explained my dress situation. Maria said any decent person would just buy something else to wear before coming. Am I the jerk? OP was in a pressureful situation, they didn't have much of a choice, and they were already late so it's not like they can just go dress shopping somewhere to pick one up last second. Also, Opie attached a picture of said dress, or a close approximation, and it's not even like that fancy or anything, it seems pretty average to me. Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my daughter her disease is not an excuse to neglect her responsibilities? My daughter, 17 year old female, got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes late April. Her DX wasn't really dramatic or anything. 
My stepsister has had it since she was a child. So when I noticed she was drinking a lot, I immediately brought her to the doctor and here we are. I can honestly say we've adjusted pretty well. My stepsister came over when she came home and helped us out a lot. My daughter's old enough that she can handle most of it on her own. Here's the problem. Ever since her diagnosis, she's completely stopped taking care of anything around the house. We have quite a few animals that she and her siblings, six and nine, share the responsibilities of. They've had to step up a ton because she won't even feed the dogs anymore. Because they're so young, there's a lot of things they cannot physically do. I'm a single mom who had to get a second job to pay for her insulin. Obviously, I don't hold that against her, it's not her fault, but I don't have the time for the animals. Not to mention her grades are all F's now. The other day, I hit a breaking point and basically told her that if she doesn't start helping out, I'll start rehoming the animals that her siblings can't handle. She had a total breakdown, telling me I have no idea what she's going through and how hard it is. I told her it's not an excuse to completely neglect everything and that she had to get her crap together or the animals will be finding new homes. She ran out of the room crying and has spoken about three words to me since then. I understand that this disease is a lot to handle, and I'm trying to be as supportive as possible, but I don't know what to do anymore. My stepsister says I need to give her time to adjust, but I don't know if I can. Am I a terrible person for doing this? I mean, I do think that you can't downplay their feelings and emotions here and that they do need some time to be able to work through this. The problem is, are those animals going legitimately neglected because nobody's being able to take care of them? If there's no reasonable path forward to having those animals get proper care, then ethically isn't it the right thing for OP to try to find some kind of housing that will give these animals the care they need? I don't think it's fair to pressure her into feeling like she has to get over it real quick, but at the same time, the animals can't just go neglected because there's nobody there to take care of them. Our next story is, am I the jerk for saying I don't want to plan my friend's birthday after not being invited to her wedding? Okay, so I first met my friend Jane, female 29, studying abroad. We were really good friends during our travels, and after college we actively stayed in touch, visiting each other in our respective different cities. I met her boyfriend Bob, now husband, when they first started dating, and have met her college friends and parents. Bob and Jane decided to move to my city right before COVID, so during lockdown, we were in each other's bubbles. We've celebrated each other's birthdays, we've had friends giving, Christmas parties together, etc. 2021, Bob and Jane got engaged in August, and when they came back, I threw them an engagement party. I brought her this wine glass that said, wedding planning wine glass, and every time she used it, she would text me a photo of her with it. In 2022, I threw Bob a 30th birthday party, but then this was also the first year I wasn't invited to her birthday. I had texted Bob asking what the plan was, and he told me that they were going out of the state for her birthday. However, on Instagram, I've seen them posting pictures of them renting a cabin with some friends, so I felt awkward. Then I wasn't invited to the bachelorette party. I didn't find this too big of a deal because Jane has some really close childhood friends and sorority friends, but then nothing about the wedding. The wedding happened this May and it was a big wedding, like 200 people probably, and I wasn't invited. I was really hurt to say the least, but I didn't say anything. I just tried to move on. I haven't talked to them really since before the wedding. They didn't wish me a happy birthday and they couldn't attend my birthday shindig because they were out of town. I'm noticing that if I don't reach out to either of them, they don't reach out to me at all. Now Bob has reached out and asked me to plan Jane's birthday party because he says, I'm the best at planning these things, and I told him I was hurt about not being invited. And he said, well, we had limit space. Don't make it a big deal. We want you to be at her birthday. I really don't want to do it, and I don't feel any desire to be friends with them. Am I being a petty jerk? I feel like if you're close enough to somebody that they want you to plan a birthday party for them, you're close enough to deserve an invite to their wedding. So I don't really blame OP for feeling slighted by these people. And honestly, it kind of sounds like they just want OP involved because they do think OP's good at planning, not because they particularly care about them being there. They had 200 guests at the wedding and there was limited space and OP couldn't make it? Yeah, right. Unless they're all like Mormon families and have 14 kids each. Our next story is, am I the jerk for asking my fiancé to make his parents get up early? I, female 32, am getting married in less than a week to my soon-to-be husband, male 34. On the day itself, I am planning on getting ready with a few friends at home. 
Currently, we have our in-laws visiting from another country, so they're staying at our house. My mother-in-law got injured and has trouble walking lately, so we ended up making her and father-in-law stay in our bedroom that's downstairs, while we're currently sleeping in the guest bedroom upstairs. It's not a big problem, but I have to admit that I'm not fond of not having access to my own room and clean clothes when I want to. I'm very independent, so being dependent on other people's schedules has always bothered me. I don't need a lot of sleep, so I go to bed late and early. My fiancé and his parents are opposites. They go to bed early and like to sleep in. So I'm waiting for around 4-5 to five hours every day to get my clean clothes because by the time I start thinking about getting clean clothes for the next day, they have already gone to bed. It is extremely hard for me to walk in on someone sleeping and I hate just to do it. It's also partly because I feel like I'm a guest in my own house and I need to walk on tiptoes to not disturb anyone. They've only been staying here for about a week, so I'll survive their stay, but I'm starting to get stressed out because of the wedding. My fiancé has also been gone for the past four days. He had to travel for his wedding suit, and then he had his bachelor party. So I've had to do all wedding-related stuff, clean up after his parents, play a good host, and also file taxes and do my job. It's a bit much, and on top of that, I've recently found out that I'm 9 weeks pregnant, and I'm suffering from terrible exhaustion and morning sickness all day. I feel myself being more irritable because I'm constantly sick or nauseous. So I'm not sure if my hormones are all whack because I'm pregnant and I'm truly being unreasonable, or if I'm actually justified in my feelings. So here's where I am the potential jerk. I spoke to my fiancé yesterday and I asked him to tell his parents to rise early on the day of the wedding so I can have access to my things and not have to worry about waiting for them for several hours. He called me selfish and said that I couldn't ask that of people. I hate to pull the, but it's our wedding day card, but I feel like I'm not being unreasonable asking them to do this for my stress levels. So am I the jerk for wanting my mother-in-law and father-in-law to get up early on the day of the wedding so I'll have full access to my own bedroom and things without feeling like I'm not allowed in there? It sounds to me like OP's already been more than fair as far as accommodation goes and they've been plenty polite up until this date. They can deal with one interruption on OP's beloved wedding day. If there was ever a day that they should just turn the cheek and accept it, it would be on their in-law's wedding day, right? Our next story is, am I the jerk? Free money, but my daughter, 26, says it's not enough. I, 58-year-old divorced male, own a small condominium that I want to sell. Today, without the involvement of any realtors, I negotiated the sale of the condo to one of my neighbors. My fiancé, because of her professional background, has all the documents necessary to process the sale without the involvement of any realtors. My daughter, 26, who still lives with my former spouse, is also a realtor. Although our relationship is fairly rocky at times, post-divorce, I offered her the opportunity to draw up all the paperwork that we could do for free without her. I offered her 3%, which is the same commission that she would net if she represented me as the seller if the buyers had their own realtor. It's also 0.5% more than she would make if she was representing only the buyers in the transaction. She got very offended, accused me of trying to screw her over. She would only agree to do it if I paid her 4%. Remember, everything she could do for us, we can do for free. I'm offering her 3% because I love her and I'm her dad. I feel that I should simply stand firm on the 3% or tell her we'll do it ourselves. Am I the jerk? Definitely not the jerk. OP said it themselves, they literally don't even have to do this, they just want to as a kind gesture. She should take the money and run. This next story is, am I the jerk for wanting to move in my parents and not my husband's and suggesting putting them in a nursing home? I, 35-year-old female, have owned our home since before marriage and we have a prenup. In day-to-day life, we refer to it as our home, but my husband, 37-year-old male, has never paid anything towards it and has no legal rights to it. All of our parents are still alive, but my husband and I were both the youngest children and our parents are all much older. His mom has some dementia and his dad has some major mobility issues. They can no longer stay in their home. Due to mother-in-law wandering the street recently, adult social services have been involved. He has two siblings, one is an addict and is in prison. The other has four kids and lives in a two-bedroom apartment. Neither of his siblings can take them in, so it's us or the nursing home. Both of my parents are older and have recently retired. 
They live in a major city but can't afford to live there on just retirement. They need to move. My older brother is dead, so it's just me that my parents can rely on. I want to move my parents in with us. They're both easygoing people and my husband gets along with them well. They also can contribute to the household finances. They wouldn't be a burden on us at all. My husband's parents just live off social security and are going into debt because of their medical costs. They would be a major burden on us. We'd have to take care of them and provide for them full time. My husband works much longer hours than I do, so I'd be responsible for them. My in-laws also aren't very appreciative people and I don't like them. I mentioned that I want to move my parents in with us and we could use the money we'd save from their financial help to put his parents in a decent home. He was furious. He thinks we should take his parents in and my parents can just move somewhere cheaper and manage their own retirement funds fine. I don't think this is reasonable at all. I expressed that he doesn't have time to look after his medically needy parents, nor can he afford in-home health care. He said as his wife, I should look after his parents out of love for him. I think his response is kind of BS to be honest. I told him under no circumstances will his parents be moving in and he's welcome to move out and care for them elsewhere. I told him if he decides to stay, I'll respect his decision of not wanting my parents to move in and I can look into other options for them. Am I the jerk for not willing to let my in-laws move in but wanting my own parents to move in? I just can't blame OP because of the implication that OP is going to be spending a lot of time and money that they really aren't obligated to do trying to take care of these parents while OP's husband is working. And also the hypocritical behavior of saying, well, you should help take care of my parents, but also your parents can kick rocks. Our next story is, am I the jerk for not wanting to give back artwork mother-in-law gave us 16 years ago? Husband, 50-year-old male, and I, 42-year-old female, recently moved to a new state, Texas to Colorado, primarily since our younger son Celiac is easier to manage in a more liberal-leaning area. The idea came up and we found a great deal house almost immediately. So our two-year plan ended up being more like two months. Husband, 50-year-old male, calls to share the news with mother-in-law. Her first reaction is to immediately ask for everything she gave us when we moved into that home 16 years ago back. She worked for some time as an art and antiques dealer and gave us some lovely pieces. Wall art, small furniture pieces, and a few small sculptures. At the time, husband and I were just dating, but things were pretty serious. Serious enough that I kicked in half of the cost on appliances and flooring updates. And he upped the bedroom count he'd been hunting for to welcome my toddler. I moved in right away. We started decorating and buying furniture and he brought these pieces from mother-in-law over. And he just said, aren't these nice? They're from my mom. 16 years go by with us living there. We married and had another child. Nothing was ever said about these items. And I grew to love them and have lots of special memories of having them in my home. All this time, I thought they were ours. I asked why he never told me it was loaned and he said our finances weren't joined yet. Then he never thought about it again. For the first time, I'm informed that they were on loan and very expensive. News to me, they've been well loved in a house with small kids and she knew it. I point out to husband that we've loaned mother-in-law thousands of dollars over the years. We've also been paying for her cell phone and sister-in-laws. Adult, lives with mother-in-law, doesn't work. Originally, they were supposed to pay us the difference for adding them, but somehow it never happens. It's been a decade and there's no sign of stopping it. For context, the two of them live in a house twice the size of ours, but have lots of money issues. Since mother-in-law had a stroke and can't work anymore, they refuse to downsize to cut costs. Their finances are none of our business until they need money. I don't think it's right to claw these pieces back. My husband thinks it's hers, so it's only right to give it back. I'm told the fact that they don't honor loans to us is different. Am I the jerk for not wanting to give up the pieces? You know, if this was a little bit of a shorter time scale, like maybe a couple of years, I would say maybe OP could be the jerk, but 16 years go by with a loan? And also the husband doesn't tell you in 16 years and all of a sudden it's like, well, okay, now's the time to give it back. Like, it just seems kind of ridiculous, right? Either way, I think ultimately OP should just give them back, cut loose their ties, stop supporting the phone bill, and honestly move on with their life. 
but considering how the husband also feels here, I wish them the best of luck on that. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another crazy am I the jerk here story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.